Oh, we've got a very special guest tonight. The former first lady of these United States, Michelle Obama, is here. I don't like it. She heard some of you haven't been eating your vegetables, and she's pissed. So, <laughs> this is uh, Mrs. Obama's fourth time on the show. And I have to say, it feels nice to get patted down by Secret Service again, doesn't it, Guillermo? Yeah, it feels good. Where did you hide your weed when they checked you out? <laughs> I left it in the car. Did you really? <laughs> you know, um, last night, you know, it's very festive in Washington, D.C. Right now, CBS aired the national tree lighting special from the White House last night. Now, we've also learned that the official White House holiday ornament is for sale. This is a uh, gingerbread White House ornament. It's $24.95. And I, have to, I find it refreshing to see a White House encouraging people to hang something other than the vice president. You know, it's... <laughs> the ornament was... Um, that ornament is a tribute to Pat Nixon, who started a tradition of gingerbread houses at the White House. Here is the former first lady with the first national gingerbread house back in 1969. They had candy canes on the balcony, wiretaps in the chimney, the whole Nixon deal. <laughs> Since the Nixons and the tradition continued, uh, this is uh, Nancy Reagan's gingerbread house, uh, ironically iced entirely with cocaine. After <laughs> Mrs. Reagan, there was Barbara Bush, who was... Um, uh, I, I think she modeled her hair on that chef's hat she's gazing at so adorably. <laughs> Hillary Clinton's gingerbread house featured what you can see what appear to be separate bedrooms for her and... <laughs> right? <laughs> then Laura Bush showed off a uh, White House gingerbread house, which was so cute, her husband actually walked in and got stuck in it for a while. <laughs> That's followed by Michelle Obama, who no gingerbread was used to make this. That's all kale, 100%. <laughs> and then who can forget Melania Trump's gingerbread house? Because uh, uh, we have that. Yeah, there you go. That's, I mean, it, you know, in Slovenia, a shoe on your roof means good luck. <laughs> Meanwhile, her husband, Donald, is still very upset that he got called out for having dinner with Kanye and his white supremacist friend after uh, a right wing Jewish commentator. I embarrassed himself by defending Trump. Orange Julius Caesar wrote, Thank you, Wayne. You are great. But how quickly Jewish leaders forgot that I was the best by far president for Israel. They should be ashamed of themselves. This lack of loyalty to their greatest friends and allies is why large numbers in Congress and so many others have stopped giving support to Israel. His response to being criticized for having dinner with known anti-Semites is to blame Jewish people for a lack of loyalty. The only thing that can make that statement more anti-Semitic is if he used the Sharpie he wrote it with to draw a little mustache on his lip first. <laughs> and not only that, this per he's the most disloyal person on the planet. He throws everyone under the bus. Trump calling Jewish people disloyal is like Nick Cannon telling Mexico to slow down on all the kids. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, The new world's greatest boss, Elon Musk, announced that his uh, Twitter will soon increase their character limit from 280 characters to 4,000, and uh, will be changing the name of the company to Facebook as well. <laughs> Elon Musk seems to be intent on filling the troll hole vacated by Donald Trump, because yesterday he wrote, my pronouns are prosecute and Fauci, which, on top of being small-minded, lowest common denominator garbage, and spreading false and dangerous conspiracy theories against a doctor who works for our good is also just a terrible joke. It's like a joke generated by AI. It doesn't make any sense. <laughs> the structure's wrong, doesn't rhyme with anything relevant. No, there are too many syllables. It's exactly the kind of joke you'd expect from a guy who named his son after the bottom row of an eye chart. But um, <laughs> for some reason, some people like him. This weekend, a young guy came up to me, very nice guy. He said, you got no love for Elon, bro? And I was like, I said, no, I, I don't. But it's not just Elon specifically. I have a problem with any richest man in the world who comes to this country to casually slander a doctor who devoted his entire life to protecting our children from HIV and COVID and Zika and swine flu and Ebola disease while you're off playing grab ass with Trump and firing rockets into space to prove your penis works. It's just a general, it's not specific. So the answer is, as long as he's attacking and spreading lies about decent Americans who've been doing He's been doing his best to protect the world since before this vomit casserole was born. <laughs> I got no love for Elon, bro, okay? <laughs> and then we have the great genius Marjorie Taylor Greene, who received the prestigious Richard Nixon Award at the Young Republican Club Gala in New York. She gave quite an acceptance speech to the Queen of Karens, still fuming about the implication she may have helped the insurrectionists on January 6th. I 
come to Washington, I swear in on January 3rd, I get accused of giving insurrection tours, which I thought was hilarious because I couldn't even find the bathroom in the Capitol. Yeah, for the first six months, she was pooping in a box under her desk. <laughs> then January 6th happens, and next thing you know, I organize the whole thing along with Steve Bannon here. And I want to tell you something, if Steve Bannon and I had organized that, we would have won. <laughs> Woo! If I had been in charge of invading my own office, Mike Pence wouldn't just look like a ghost, he'd be one. <laughs> Woo! And just in case that didn't give you an insurrection, young Republicans, how about this? Now in school, we're learning that teachers can pass around uh, dildos, butt plugs, and lube. By the way, you can pick up a butt plug or a dildo at Target and CBS nowadays. <laughs> Sound like somebody's giving her secret Santa a hint. <laughs> wonder where they get this stuff, these non-problems they get all worked up about. Well, it turns out, as is often the case, it was a topic tackled by the always vigilant crew at the Tucker Carlson show. A producer for Tucker Carlson tonight happened to notice that CVS is now selling sex toys, and they appear to be a relative bargain. For example, there's a tush cush for $11.97, though the accompanying lotion that goes with it will set you back an additional $11.97. And if you've got the cash right there in the middle, the buzzy butt will run you thirty-two fifty. Information. <laughs> just wanted you to know. <laughs> he's not just a buzzy butt spokesman; he's also a customer. <laughs> really amazing. It's well, we just witnessed a dildo reporting on another dildo. I never thought I'd see the day. Uh, this is okay. Uh, give me this. So anyway, this we sent out our Christmas cards uh, over the weekend. Our daughter, Jane, our son, Billy, my wife captured the one moment that day they weren't pinching each other. And then my job was to make the card. I went on one of those websites where you use the template. But apparently, even though I used the proofreader that they provide, I forgot to delete the sample family name. Now, it's very hard to see on the front, but oh, maybe you can see that. The Hartfords is what it says. <laughs> <laughs> so Merry Christmas from the Hartfords. We mailed them all out now, and it's too late, but. We, um, you know, there's very little time left before Christmas. Santa has his hands very full, so Guillermo and I have been pitching in. We've been sitting down with kids to help St. Nick figure out who has been naughty and who has been nice this year. Hello there. Thank you. You want to have a seat right there? What is your name? Ellis. Ellis, how old are you? Five and a half. Five and a half? Are you excited about Christmas? Yes. Very excited, huh? Is it your favorite holiday? Mm-hmm. Um, have you been good this year? How good have you been? I've been very good. Super good? Mm-hmm. Ryan was trying to make me bad, but I distract him. Who's because... Ryan? Oh, he doesn't listen. OK, let's tell me about him, because we need to know about all the good little boys and girls, but we also need to know about the bad little boys and girls. Is Ryan a bad boy? He doesn't listen. He is. Oh, he doesn't listen. Well, who doesn't he listen to? He doesn't listen to Miss Back. Oh, and that's oh. And he even says, no, you was running to me, but I wasn't. He was lying. He's a Whoa. big liar. He's a liar? Mm -hmm. You ever call him Ryer the Liar? Mm -hmm. Lion Ryan? Well, when Aiden put his headset away, I called him Ellis. The Who's same Aiden? As he doesn't listen, too. OK, so Aiden doesn't listen either. Ryan doesn't oh. listen. Aiden doesn't listen. Who else doesn't listen? Dylan. Dylan? <laughs> Anybody else I should put on the naughty list? Valentina doesn't listen. Valentina <laughs> doesn't listen. All That's right. That's a big, big one. So now, should any of these kids, Ryan, Aiden, Dylan, Valentina, should any of them get presents for Christmas this year? Well, they don't listen, but one day they will. Do you always listen? I do. But Ryan says I don't. Ryan says you don't. It sounds like you and Ryan really have a problem, huh? But I told Mrs. Beck, and he says, Ryan, no. You know, this reminds me of a show called Cheers. You ever see Cheers? 
Hello. Sam and Diane, you know who they are? Ted um, Danson? No. Um, I don't know. Shelly Long? Don't know them. Okay. Anyway, Sam and Diane on Cheers were always at each other's throats. They really didn't get along. But then as the seasons went on, it turned out they fell in love. And it turned out that they were um, kind of meant to be together. Of course, then years later, uh, they broke up. Frazier came in, dated Diane. <laughs> Shelley Long quit the show, um, was replaced by um, Rebecca on the show, um, who's played by Kirstie Alley. Oh, yeah. I didn't know that. Oh, yeah. So do you think maybe it's possible Ryan is in love with you, and that's why you're bickering so much? Yeah. You do. <laughs> Would you mind taking a little survey, customer satisfaction-wise? It's important to our boss. Okay. Well, I haven't been, I haven't practiced to juggle yet. Well, all you have to do is answer these questions. Are you ready? Mm-hmm. How satisfied are you with your visit with us, the two of us? A, very satisfied, somewhat satisfied, or not satisfied? I'm not satisfied. You're not. No, I'm sorry to hear that. How likely would you be to recommend visiting us to other kids? Very likely, very likely, or very likely? Very likely. Very likely. And finally, were you satisfied with the gifts you received? Oh, we haven't given you no. gifts yet. Oh, let's give you something. Oh, there we go. That's for you. That's uh, Mike Pence's new autobiography, so help me God. Well, I, you... like, well I like my own books. My books that has children's stuff. I well, like yeah. children's stuff. Right, well, he has children. Um, are you satisfied with the book? Are you very satisfied, really satisfied, or not at all satisfied? I'm not satisfied at all. You're not at all satisfied with the book. Okay, all right. Well, you know what? It's good for us to know. It's great information. <laughs> Thank you so much. You can keep that book, and hopefully once you read it, you will be satisfied. Okay? Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Good we'll job. We'll tell Santa Claus that you're a very good listener, okay? Okay.